Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the build video for the Knight of Gold IMS plastic kit from Volks. In this video, I'm going to be building the fuselage section, which consists of the shoulders, the waist unit, the hip unit, and the skirt armor. There are more parts in this build than the first video, so it's slightly longer, but it should be pretty fun. So let's get started. Before I move on, I want to note that there are a lot of exclamation points in this section because there are screws that you need to use and little things like that. So I would recommend using an app like Google Translate if you don't understand Japanese. That's what I did and it was really helpful for this part. So I'm going to start by cutting out the pieces that I need for the first part. And just go on from there. So before I can start assembling the parts, some will need to be painted first. As you can see here, there's a bronze color that's going to be used. So I'm going to go ahead and wait to assemble until I paint. This is something else I want to note. I was having a hard time finding this part C13. This is the sprue tree for C and it's nowhere on here. I was getting a little frustrated but eventually I figured out that it's this little extra part which is labeled C13. Some of these waist pieces have nubs on the inside curve, so just be a little careful cutting those. So if you watched my first video, you'll see that I'm using Mr. Surfacer Black for primer. And I'm going to continue that with the rest of the kit. So the part I just painted was the waist piece and now I'm going to start building the chest and shoulder piece. On the back section there are three armor plates that go on. The bottom one is glued but the top two are movable parts so they just kind of stick on. And the back side has some 
indented sections that are going to be bronze color while the top is gold. There's also a cockpit piece which goes on underneath the cockpit armor but once you glue the armor on it's not even going to be visible so I think it's up to you if you want to paint it or not. I did but it's literally not visible at all. So there are two big parts that go on top of the shoulder and they both come in halves. So this is me gluing those together. These are going to be the only seams in this small section. As you can see there's a seam on the top which is pretty easy to get to. But there's a curved seam on the bottom that's a little more difficult, but we'll make it work. And then the front section kind of clips in. And I'll put that on after I finish the seam work. I don't really have any good sanding tools to get into tight spaces so I'm mostly just using my exacto knife and some round files that I have. And some rolled up sandpaper. I'm using a little bit of gray primer from Tamiya to check the seam work. It's a little easier to see the imperfections than the black primer. Now that the underside is painted, I need to mask it so I can paint the gold areas. So I'm going to use the same technique I used in the last video for some parts, which is to cover it with tape, and then cut the inside edges with a fresh X-Acto blade. The underside that's closest to the mounting point is a little harder to get to with tape. So instead of tape, I'm going to be using masking fluid. The one I use is from the art store, meant for watercolor, but it's pretty much the same as something like Mr. Masking Saw, if you've used that before, as far as function. So here are the parts ready for the panel line wash, which I'm going to do off camera. And this is removing the panel line excess. For top coat I'm using Mr. Super Clear Gloss in a spray can. It also comes in airbrush version but I just like the spray can because it's more convenient. Now I'm going to assemble the movable parts of the shoulder. It requires some screws but it's pretty easy.
When you're tightening the screws, you just want to make sure you don't over tighten it. Uh, you only need it tight enough so that it moves. It's harder to describe, but once you actually do it, it's easy to figure out. This piece that I just cut out holds the movable part together with the top of the torso. It's actually a pretty tight fit, so I didn't bother cementing it. Part of the reasoning was in case I need to remove the arms for some reason, I would still be able to. So as you can see, the screws actually show through on top, so if you need to adjust the shoulders, you can. As with the bottom piece, the back area also just sticks on really tightly, so I didn't glue that one either. And the same goes for the waist. The top of it actually sticks into some holes that are in a poly cap, so it's a very tight fit. And if I need to remove the top later on, I can. These are some extra armor pieces that need to be glued on the side. So the manual recommends you do not attach the top section with cement so that you can get to the screw later. You can pause and see my Google Translate here. And there's one small decal that goes on top of the pilot 
hatch cover. You can kind of see it there, the little red diamond. So next is the skirt armor. It's quite a few pieces, but pretty simple. And from there, the hip joints where the legs will attach. All of the parts so far have had something that you could clip it to with alligator clips for painting. But two of the armor pieces didn't have anything substantial so I had to use some blue tack. A few parts are two-toned on the underside with a bronze and a gold so I'm going to start with the bronze color. Once that paint's cured, I'm going to mask again, and I'm using masking fluid and tape combination. But for these small rounded off squares on this one piece, I'm going to be using a paintbrush to apply it. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to kind of push it into the corners. For the pieces with straight edges, I'm going to use really thin masking tape. I think it's a point two. Once I get the edges, I'm going to go back in with the masking fluid and fill the center. This is just to save on masking tape because the fluid is cheaper than the tape. And this is what happens when you don't clean your brush out right away. This is pretty much a rubber brush now, and it's impossible to clean. It's ruined for good. This type of fluid dries almost transparent, so you pretty much have to trust that it's on there. I'm using a toothpick that I'd used before that has rubber on the end of it to peel off the rubber. It's actually a liquid latex, I believe, but it peels off really easily from the gloss lacquer surface. And any masking tape I'll just remove the normal old fashioned way. The next part shows you how to insert this nut into the square piece. Basically, if you can't get it in, it's suggesting to use the screw to kind of tweak it in. 
and then the lower sections talking about the rubber it's basically saying don't use paint it thinner on the rubber paint it before you put it on As you can kind of see here, I was struggling to get the nut into the plastic piece. So I tried using the bolt to kind of tweak it in at an angle like the manual suggests. But I found what was easiest for me was just putting it in straight up and down with no angle at all. It just popped right in. I'm putting the parts on skewers for painting but there are two parts that I'm going to need to smooth out some seams. When you use liquid cement and squeeze the parts together it actually filled the seam pretty nicely so I don't need to add any putty to these just sand them smooth. So the parts have all been painted and now I'm touching up some detail with a brush and Vallejo paint. These are little sections that the panel line wash doesn't catch. I'm also going to paint the red part that's on the front armor piece. And then panel line wash for the rest. Now that the skirt armor is painted and top coated, I'm going to glue the halves together. It's pretty straightforward. Just find the piece that matches and a little cement. Or so I thought. When I was putting the parts together, there was a gap between the edges. I kept trying to get it to fit. I pushed a little too hard in some parts, left a couple of dents, which I may go back and fix, 
but it's not that noticeable. Eventually I checked with the manual and these parts that I'm about to show you, these gaps, they're actually supposed to be there. So keep that in mind when you're building this. There are a couple poly caps you need to attach to the armor with the round holes. This is where the sword scabbards will attach to the mortar head. But just pay special attention to the direction you put it in. There's a flat side and a round side. The flat side should be facing outward. The hip joint in this kit uses these O-rings that you just put on the part and then push them into this hole. I was having a hard time getting them in because it's a really tight fit. They kept wanting to kind of unroll off the edge, but eventually I got them in far enough and then figured out that once you screw the two parts together, it'll kind of push them into place. These are the hip joints that the legs will attach to in a later step. I decided not to glue them on at this point in case I have trouble with the legs attaching. They fit on pretty tightly so they might not even need gluing at all. This top part has a really tight fit so I didn't glue it on and there's going to be a poly cap that fits on top. 
the rectangular shaped one, which is an even tighter fit. And the reason I'm not gluing some of these parts is because of the screw system in case I need to take it apart later. This part that fits on the underside should not be glued so that you can access the screw. The rest of these parts fit looks a little complicated so I'm going to do a dry fit before I start cementing just to kind of see how they fit together and you'll see the reason that I do that in a minute. For this back piece I just want to note that it has these little pegs that keep it from pushing in really far. I thought I was just not pushing hard enough at first, but it turns out it's just supposed to have these little gaps in it. That's normal. And this is why I dry fit. If I had cemented this part, it pretty much would have been screwed because there's no way this piece will go on unless you put it on first. So now I'll start to glue it all together, but first I want to show that before you put the side armor on, you have to put the top part 
with the waist into the bottom part. Otherwise you won't be able to get it on. The side armor will be in the way. These side parts actually fit in pretty snugly, so I'm going to not cement them just in case I want to ever take off the waste unit for some reason. So what I'm doing with the cement bottle is just finding a way to prop up the model so that those coattail armors, as I'm going to call them, will be in a vertical position without any weight pulling on it while the cement cures. That way they'll be straight whenever they're dry. A little while later everything looks fine and all that's left is to pop on the head unit. And that concludes this step, the fuselage. The next step will be the legs. Hopefully you'll be back for that. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll take a look and answer as many as I can. Thanks for watching.